Um, it has to do with my origin, of where I come from. I come from Iceland. So actually, I grew up in a crack. A crack, when I say that, the earth opened up. Earthquakes, volcanic, volcanic eruptions. With volcanic eruption, the interesting thing is to detect how connected we are. Uh, not only uh, between the source of volcanic eruption or the location and then where there is happening human impacts, but also, for example, there might be similar patterns in Scotland and in Finland, in Switzerland. So uh, uh, volcanic eruptions uh, are a great tool to demonstrate how connected we are. For me, I was just a child, I was playing, I didn't know anything about that. And and actually through this, I think this through my childhood, I learned, uh, it, it was actually like a teacher. Uh, I learned sort of a, a language of form, a language of lines, a language of, of space. The patience to listen to colleagues from different disciplines whose uh, uh, language, the disciplinary language you might first do not understand fully, but being able to learn this new language and listen and, and then start to build on their, their collaboration. And see what they are talking about, what they are thinking about. Just curiosity, open up and uh, no prejudice and, and like try, oh, I know this and I know that. First of all, you have to be curious. So you have to, to, to love learning and you have to love studying and you have to love to understand things. And I think this is the most important thing when you do research. You have really, you have to have the hunger to get deeper into things. Freedom, openness, um, new possibilities. Um, maybe those are three good things. That openness to collaboration, going out of my way to communicate where I just constantly want to learn from my colleagues and to discover new fields and new individuals that are able to help me make sense of the past. The, the word um, passion, nearly, nearly being manic. Or so. I said passion, because I know that in, in, in arts you find something and then you're just driven because you want to find out. So I see this passion as well. And, and then the people asking questions, so curiosity, the passion, the curiosity. And, and that this is somehow, somehow what I felt is the same in arts, where I knew with musicians. And, um, and then of course it's fantastic when you meet other people and you can make this even grow. It's passion. I think it's just passion and interest. And I always wanted to become a geologist, maybe not a paleoclimatologist when I was five to six years old, but I was always interested in nature and um, um, the environment. And I think the interest to discover something new. Um, and so I'm a, maybe one of the few true explorers, so going underground into caves when maybe nobody was there before me and, and collecting new samples, that drives me, that this interest and passion. And I never stop thinking about my records. <laughs> uh, like uh, the word um, creativity. Creativity. Um, and, um, and this is, I, I see that also, no matter how dry and scientific the people are, it's just, you see how they, how creative they're going. If we are really into understanding a process, into bringing new knowledge or into doing something creative, I'm not sure how I would picture it. You can offer a different view. You can, you can do it with a different approach because you are your personality is structurally different. I notice this all the time with the people when they talk about their, uh, yeah, what, they're, what they found out, what, about their truth and telling their stories. All of my recent work is about including natural agency in the human story and working out what that 
role should be. So I regard natural agency a bit like making a loaf of bread. We, you know, historians have baked their bread for a long time without any yeast. And I think that putting natural agency into the ingredients makes for a better loaf. Then this interdisciplinary goes uh, on and, and they start formulating it differently, thinking about it differently, so new things might be coming out. And that was for me fantastic to look upon this cooperation from colleagues. In this nascent field of interdisciplinary or collaborative history, um, things are changing slowly, but they are changing. With all this new data coming in, it, it just makes our understanding or our attempts to understand and reconstruct past all the more exciting. Or I noticed how, how also how important the image becomes and, and what impact it has. And this is something that I actually, when I looked at my works here, I thought, hmm, <laughs> it is, it's there as well. But I approach it in a much more abstract way. Uh, I am actually going away from reality a bit. A model is uh, an attempt to represent uh, reality or processes in reality. So it's mathematical, okay, you describe processes um, mathematically and then you try to, uh, what we call model simulation. So we change certain parameters, for example, in a climate model, um, you can simulate a volcanic eruption and you do this by, for example, setting up the parameters of this eruption. Where does the eruption take place? How much gas is emitted in the uh, atmosphere? And then you let the model, uh, on the basis of physical equations, for example, calculate the, the climatic impact uh, of this eruption. This, this better, I think, is called the, the you know, the design. It's a very touristy thing. You can buy it at the airport, I'm afraid. But I have other Icelandic sweaters that you can't buy at the airport. In life, I would say the movements in life, the movements in nature, and the movements of Earth, it's all there. Of course, uh, human society uh, cannot live without nature. Uh, climate is always there. We are not living in vacuum. So nature, environment, and, and climate is always there when there is a human society. It cannot be taken away from, from people.